Well, and thanks for joining me on the fourth and last video about the ArcBird Autopilot 2.0 system. Now, in this video, I want to go over some frequently asked questions. These are the questions that I've seen people asking in the uh, RC Groups uh, forum, uh, the dedicated page for the ArcBird unit, and also the kind of questions that came into my mind and the problems that I faced, or the little tweaks that I had to do to make everything work okay, the settings that I had to change. And after about 20 flights of doing this, I have almost answered every single question and solved every single problem that I have faced with this. So I just want to put that out there. It might be useful or not to some of you, but I can guarantee that you will come across at least one or two of these scenarios while you're doing your flight with the Arcbird. So it'll be a good idea to stay tuned and watch this. The first one is how do you calibrate the compass? Well, you don't. As I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, the compass on Arcbird doesn't need calibration. You just start the system on, set it at home, as I showed you in the function, and then you go from there. It doesn't need calibration. So far, I have never felt the need to calibrate it. The compass is almost always spot on. Number two is the oscillation of aeroplane at RTH or AST. Now remember, AST stands for the Automatic Stabilization System. All right, and I will go into that in detail of it just a little bit later. But let's say you put your plane into autopilot or into RTH and you find that your plane is wobbling up and down, oscillating as it's moving. It's still coming back home and it still holds altitude, but it's wobbling like this. It's wobbling while it's coming back home. And when you're looking at it from the screen, it can make you feel really dizzy. It's happened to people and I know it's happened to me. Two ways of sorting this out. Way number one, obviously, is if you go into your menu, I will show you the screen in here. Number one is to go into RTH parameters and check this elevate angle. If this angle is too much, that can cause that oscillation. I remember my angle was at four degrees and I'd reduced it down to 3.5 and it took care of the oscillation. But it isn't just that. It's also the neutral check. If you go back and go back into control parameters, there's this thing called neutral check. Remember, this basically determines the very balanced flat position of your aeroplane. And you do that on the ground before you fly. So if you did your neutral check while your plane was not completely balanced, the front was tilting down or up, that can also cause the oscillation. So make sure your neutral check is as balanced as you can make it and reduce the elevate angle. Number three, not flying straight while you engage AST, lock heading, height and direction, and lock direction. AST, if you switch to one of the automatic flying systems from Arcbird, where it has to hold uh, height and direction, or only direction, or only height, or the AST system, where it does everything on its own, you see that every time you switch to it, the plane either veers left, or veers right, or goes up, or goes down. It, happened. it has happened to me. It's happened to me quite a few times. It's actually one of these things that is quite, not difficult, but it's quite uh, sensitive. And for that, I'll have to take you back to the plane. So if we go to the airplane in here, you see the Arcbird unit is in here. And if I remove it, if you can see, I've drawn some lines underneath. When your Arcbird unit is sitting in there, you've got to make sure that it's absolutely center to the chassis of the plane and it's not tilting either this way or this way. It has to be absolutely straight. Use whatever you have to, a vibration mount or tack glue or whatever. Just make sure that this unit is absolutely straight with the chassis of the plane. Because if it's tilting this way, when you, when you plug in AST or heading mode or height or direction mode, the plane will not go straight. So if your aeroplane is veering to the left or right or gaining altitude or losing altitude when you go into one of the automatic flying functions, that means that the actual Arcbird unit is not sitting straight, horizontal, flush with the chassis of your plane. You have to take care of that and make sure you put it right in place. And I have done it. I have at one point, I had it absolutely neutral to zero, and it was an absolute pleasure. When you engage the system, the plane will just track straight. There's another one. Antenna tracker. Question about antenna tracker. Quite a few people have asked it on C-Group before. Uh, 
can you use another antenna tracker with it? I'm not so sure about that. I guess you can use another antenna tracker, but all antenna trackers demand some kind of a unit inside the plane. And uh, with Arcbird, you can use their own antenna tracker. Now, I don't have that antenna tracker, so I can't tell you much about it, but I know that you can use their own antenna tracker with it, and you don't need anything extra with it. Just buy an antenna tracker, and this unit has a tracking system inside it, which communicates with the antenna tracker. If I get my hands on it, I will give you a detailed breakdown of it at some other point. There's another question. There are some modes on Arcbird, like for example, AST, gyro, lock height and direction, and lock direction. What are the differences? They might all seem to be doing the same thing. Specifically, the lock height and direction and the AST seem to do exactly the same thing. That is to keep the height and keep the direction of the plane and not change it. There is one minor difference though. Well, I, I guess there's a major difference. AST is a totally combined, completely self-sustaining system. When you switch on the AST, it will remember the last position that you were heading towards and the last altitude that you had before you switched it on, which means it will just keep going in that direction, holding that very altitude, and it will modulate the throttle with it. So AST takes care of the throttle for you, and it also remembers the last position where you flicked the switch. Lock heading in direction, height in direction, sorry, on the other hand, does exactly the same thing. It remembers the last position of the height and direction and maintains it, only it doesn't take care of the throttle for you. So you still have to manage the throttle. Now, if you are heading in one direction and you want to keep a certain kind of height, for example, if you lower the throttle, you run the risk of stalling your aeroplane because in LKHD, lock, height, and direction mode, it doesn't take care of the throttle. AST, on the other hand, will not stall your airplane. It will take care of the throttle where it needs to. That's the major difference. And gyro is just a gyro. We all know about gyros. That's just a compensation device. All gyro does is it doesn't hold a, a heading or a direction or a height. All it does is it smoothens your plane against unwanted turbulence and wind shots. Okay, another one, 4S voltage showing high. When you put a 4S battery on it, your voltage shows like 18 volts or something. It's happened to me. And for that, what you need to do is you need to go into your menu, go into OSD and go into AD calibration. And in here, you want to bring down this voltage to as close to 12 as you can, because this is your video voltage. And as you keep bringing it down to 12.6, keep an, uh, sorry, to 12, Keep an eye on the voltage of your 4S video, and when it represents its true voltage through a true multimeter, then you got it. And after that, every single time, it will show you the true voltage, just like it does in here. That's the true voltage of my battery right now, 15.1 volts. Right, another question, GPS not catching satellites. Now, this one has come up quite a few times on RC groups. Two things about that. Number one, GPS is a very circumstantial thing. You want to make sure that your plane is out there in the open, looking right up at the sky. GPS will not work indoors or around things or under a tree canopy. That's one of the things. The second thing, albeit, is a bit more functional. And for that, I'll have to take you back to the plane. The GPS connection in the back of the awkward unit is a little white plastic unit, as you can see in here. Sorry, in here. There it is. That's white plastic unit. And I would strongly suggest that when you get this unit, drop a small blob of hot glue in there to get the wires absolutely switched in in one position. Because this can actually lose GPS quite a few times. It's happened to people. And you can also fray the wires or break the wires. And the last one... And this is something that uh, I think is very important, and it almost is the whole reason why you will have something like this. A question which I remember somebody asked, and it has happened to people before, and it's very important for you to, that you lost radio signal with your airplane, and your airplane did not come back home. It kept flying. Arcbird didn't do anything to save it. Well, see, here's the thing. Any system, like Arcbird or any other autopilot system, they rely on something really simple, and it's called fail-safe. You have to make sure that you have to tell your radio what fail-safe position it should assume after losing signal. You have to teach that to your receiver. 
And in our case, obviously, if you can see this switch here and this switch here is RTH. If you can see, it goes into RTH. So what you need to do is put your radio into a position, flex the switch to the position where RTH engages, and then save that as fail safe. So when you lose signal, your receiver will straight away divert to the switches and settings, which work as RTH. Arcbird will read that and bring you back home. Now, in my case, I actually tested that firsthand and in a very real panicky situation. What happened was the battery on my Futaba, which I use a LIFE battery, it was at 9.6 volts and it just went dark on me. It started beeping really bad and the transmitter turned off. The plane was probably about seven, 800 meters away. It assumed RTH, it came back overhead, it started circling. I actually ran back home, which is about a two minute run from the field, got myself another battery, went back out there, put it into the transmitter and landed the plane. An Arcbird saved my aeroplane, in spite of the fact that I had no radio whatsoever to work with. So guys, I hope that you liked the series of videos on Arcbird. Great device, great for its price, but very misunderstood among a lot of the community. In fact, I was a little bit surprised and shocked that most of the people on uh, uh, RC groups that were sent these units to test, they were, they were beta testers. They didn't say very good things about these units and they, were, they keep slating them and saying that the old one was better than the new one. Listen, I've been using this for quite a long time now and this does everything that I want from it. Okay, it's not going to build me a new house, but then I don't expect that. This unit is a great unit for its price, and for the price, for value, for money, nothing comes close really very much. And uh, uh, again, I should say this at the end of the video, Arkbird hasn't paid me to do this. I actually bought this unit, and I even spent extra to bought the current sensor. But I'm saying this because this unit worked very well for me, and uh, I wanted to share that experience to a lot of other people. Uh, so that if anything they find useful about it, they can find in these series of videos. Now, by no means am I ever, ever trying to claim that I'm a know-it-all and I know everything. Whatever I've told you in these videos is simply and totally predicated on my own experience, things that I have done and things that have resulted out of it. It's a complete self-taught thing. Some of the things I might have said could be wrong or slightly a deviation of it. But again, as I said, it has worked for me exactly on the settings that I have used. You don't have to stick by them but they are the better settings. Right, so concluding this series of Arcbird videos, thank you very much for being with me on this, and I will see you later with uh, some other video about my gear. You have already seen my gear in the video. If you want to ask any questions about anything in here or on a video or any of the other components that you've seen in this, please send me a message or leave a comment, and I'll try my best to do that. Thanks very much. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.